Hello, my name is Wayne O'Connor, and I would like to share two poems, uh, free verse prose poetry poems, from Waysides Along the Journey for Caravansary. My book is available both in paperback and as digital editions for Kindle at Amazon.com. Walk in the Woods while walking through my own quaint tree-lined path in the local park, I imagine a brooding forest decorated in vibrant brushstrokes of reds, golds, and yellows. Behind and above the flaming canopy of deciduous trees, there is a snow-capped backdrop of blue-gray mountains. Overcast and ashen, the sky is painted in melancholy tones, that complement my mood. Even the ethereal beauty of the woodland cottage, smoke coiling upwards, reminiscent of an exquisite oil painting, only briefly stirs the longing in my heart and soul. Brightly colored leaves cartwheel slowly in the winds, like flamboyantly hued clothes in a laundromat dryer, as they blanket the lawn and nearby pond. Gorgeously plumed teals, like tiny feathered Cessna planes, coast onto the rippled pond. They swim in flowing, ever-widening circles, and dive into its depths, before popping out with quiet splashes. Squirrels dash past the cottage, mouths crammed with acorns, and claw their way up the rough umber bark of towering moss and fungi speckled oaks into leafy nests and dark boreholes and tumble into a troubled sleep dreaming of the coming snow written the 11th the 27th of 2011 what if let me start by saying that when i was very young i thought up my own axiom every mountain of superstition contains a molehill of truth I probably reinvented the wheel, but... We are so often afraid of speculation or having an open mind that rather than use discernment, we just throw the baby out with the bathwater. That said, here is my purposely weird and over-the-top Christian fantasy poem. In the free verse pro style, of course. What if God did recreate instead of create the earth in the Genesis account? What if there were waters above the earth, on the earth, and below the earth, before the Nawakian deluge? What if there was a pre-Adamic civilization, or an ice age, before and after Adam? What if elves, dwarves, mermen, or other mythical creatures once existed during a pre-Adamic or pre-flood time? And that, unless the product of fallen angel disguises, were just unknown beings that had a choice to serve or not to serve Jehovah, creator of the heavens and the earth. Or if animals once talked. I have read where C.S. Lewis speculated the possibility and then used that scenario in his fiction. Just today I read, in Job chapter 12, verse 7, But now please ask the animals, and they will teach you, and the birds of the heavens, and they will tell you. Job 12:8 or speak to the earth, and it will teach you, and the fish of the sea will recount to you. Job 12.9 Who of all these does not know that Jehovah's hand has done this? End of the verses from Job. While this may be allegorical speech, we do know the serpent spoke, before he was cursed to slither through the dust on his belly. Was he a reptoid or just an unknown creature? What if giants were not merely fairy tales, and once walked the land, or will do so openly once more before Jesus returns with his saint and angel entourage? Whether the Nephilim were created by fallen angel couplings, or twisted DNA manipulation is a moot point. What if one or two ancient civilizations before or after Adam reached a level of technology equal to or superior to that of today? What if they used ley lines and gravity technology more than metallurgy and fossil fuels? Little evidence would still exist. That which does would be explained as faked or locked 
away. Labeled with prehistoric religious artifacts tags, mysterious artifacts could be hidden in cluttered dusty museum basements or black ops funded government warehouses. What if the alleged moon bases or Mars sites are not the result of aliens but the product of fallen angel mischief? Be it spiritual illusion and creatively crafted lies or trading dark wisdom and forbidden technology with a select few humans, ancient and modern, like colonial adventurers traded trinkets, beads, and whiskey to Native Americans for beaver pelts. Personally, I can do without elves and dwarves and whatnot or talking animals. Well, maybe the talking animals would be quaint. What I would like to see is the sky canopy repaired and relish the benefits of that Edenic paradise restored, whether in the Kingdom Age or Eternity Future. Written on the 11th, the 30th of 2011. Thank you for listening. And once again, these are two poems taken from Waysides Along the Journey for Caravansary. The book, either as a Kindle edition or as a paperback, is available at Amazon.com.